。Hi。好，今日呢，我哋呢就會試下一個四歲嘅小朋友可唔可以解決到一題 d s c Genetics 嘅問題。喺事前呢，我已經教咗呢個四歲嘅小朋友呢，用一個特別嘅方法去睇呢啲題目㗎啦。呢類型嘅題目呢，其實只要學識咗呢個方法，就一定做到㗎啦。你有冇信心做到？有。Yes。好。Yes。不過我要向大家保證，呢、這個小朋友事前係從來冇睇過呢條題目。而且佢係唔知道個答案嘅，我哋試下呢個小朋友從呢一幅圖裏面睇唔睇到個答案啦。預備好未？預備好。如果揾到嘅，試下揾一個啱嘅答案。邊個係啱嘅答案？圈咗佢。即係你淨係揀呢個，其他嗰啲有冇用？冇。冇。咁下面應該揀 A、B、C、D， 應該係邊一個 ？B。圈住佢。好，呢位四歲嘅小朋友揀咗答案係 B。我已經事先偷偷地將個答案擺咗喺部 iPad 後面，睇下個答案係乜嘢。就就就就，就係 B 啊！恭喜你小朋友，你答到第一題目。Yes yes yeah。Actually, for that question, in that years, less than fifty percent of students got it correct. And that type of question is what we call the pedigree related question. So, what exactly a pedigree is? Now, let's consider a person with dominant phenotype. How do we know whether this person is homozygous dominant or heterozygous? In plants, we can carry out the test cross. That is to bleed an individual with a homozygous recessive individual. But in humans, we cannot force someone to mate with someone else, right? So it is almost impossible for us to do genetic experiments on humans. However, we can study something called a pedigree that allow us to find out the genotype of different individuals. So this is a typical pedigree that we can see. On the left hand side here, we can see some Roman numeral and this number represent the generation and this is generation one, the second generation and this is the third generation. And on the white hand side, you will see something called the key. And in a pedigree, usually females are represented by circle and male is represented by square. In our case here, the normal females and the normal males are represented by the white circle and white squares. And for the females or male with disease, they will be darkened, they will be shaded. And each individual actually is represented by a number or sometimes it can be a name. And this is for easy communication so that when you are referring to an individual, you can use their numbers to represent it. Now let me demonstrate how we can use the pedigree to find out or to identify the genotypes of different individuals. In this case here, the allele for normal is given to be dominant and the allele for recessive is already given as recessive. So we use capital letter D to represent allele for normal and small letter D for representing the allele for disease. Individual number four here, she is definitely homozygous recessive. This is because it shows up the recessive trait. So for her, the only possible genotype will be homozygous recessive. That is both allele being recessive so that this allele can show up. And as individual four is homozygous recessive, her parents, both of them, should have at least one allele for disease so that these parents can give this recessive allele to individual four, right? But then when you look at the phenotype of individual one and two, both of them are normal. So for normal, they must have the allele for normal, right? So both of them must have the allele for normal. In other words, individuals one and two, they must be heterozygous. So we can use these to determine their genotype. How about other individual? Please try to identify them. So hopefully you have identified the genotypes of these individuals now. For individual 3, we cannot use this pedigree to determine his genotype. As the parents are heterozygous, he will have chance to be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. 
both are possible. For individual 5, it is also possible for him to be having homozygous dominant or heterozygous. However, when we look at individual 6, we see that individual 6 must be homozygous recessive because individual 6 phenotype is having the disease. In this case, one of the allele is received from the mother and another one must be received from the father. That's why his father cannot be homozygous dominant. Because if the father is homozygous dominant, it is impossible for the father to transfer the recessive allele to his son. And for individual 7, it is also not possible for her to be homozygous dominant. Because her mother individual 4 is homozygous recessive, it is impossible for her mother to give her any dominant allele. So, that's why her recessive allele is received from her mother. But then individual 7 is normal, so it must have at least one allele for normal, and this allele very likely to be received from his father. And this is how we try to use the pedigree to find out the genotypes of different individuals. Just now we have tried to use the pedigree to find out the genotypes, but in the public exam, they may further ask you to predict the phenotype of the offspring. For example, in the couple 4 and 5, what is the chance for them to have the third child who is a female and this female is normal? In this case, there are two criteria. First, it has to be a female. Second, she must be normal. So now, let's try to figure it out with the genetic diagram. After you use the genetic diagram, probably you will find out that half of the offspring will be normal and half of the offspring will be having disease. However, do you still remember we have two criteria? And one of the criteria is it has to be a female. In sex determination, only half of the chance of all the offspring will be female. In other words, even though the offspring is normal, it also needs to be a daughter. So 50% times 50% equal to 25%. So the conclusion is the chance of having a female which is normal will be 25%. The last type of question that the public exam may ask you is to determine whether a particular allele or a particular trait, whether it is dominant or recessive, using the pedigree given. That is, they don't tell you whether the allele is dominant or recessive, but you have to determine it yourself. If you don't use my method, you can still use it by trial and error. That is, you assume that the allele is dominant, and if this allele is dominant, the pedigree will be possible or not. Well, you can do this, but it is very time consuming. If you know the secret behind, actually you can solve the problems in seconds. As you can see in the beginning of my video, even my four-year-old son can do this. So you can do it as well. Let's go! The secret is actually to find out this golden triangle from the pedigree. The golden triangle has two criteria. And the first criteria is the parents must be having the same phenotype, just like individuals 1 and 2. And the second criteria is at least one of their offspring should be having opposite phenotype of them. So this is individual 4. And if you can find this golden triangle, you can solve the problem very easily. And from this triangle, I can say in a second that the allele for normal phenotype is dominant. That is, the parents' phenotypes are dominant. So the allele for normal is dominant. And the allele for disease is recessive. But why? Very often, the public exam question will ask the student to explain the reason behind without using genetic diagrams. And actually, throughout the years, the marking scheme is quite consistent. If you remember this standard pattern of answer, you can get 4 to 5 marks very easily. So let's look at this case. For individual 4, he is having disease. So at least one of his allele must be the allele for disease. As we do not know whether this allele is dominant or recessive, we cannot say that another allele must be dominant or recessive. But at least he will have the allele for disease. And this allele for disease must be come from at least one of his parents, that is individuals 1 or 2. So let's assume it is coming from individual 1. Okay, so individual 1 has the allele for disease. But when you look at individual 1, he is normal, right? He must have the allele 
for normal phenotype. All right. So in this case, individual one must be heterozygous. Same for individual two. If the allele for disease is coming in from individual two, so the individual two will also have the allele for disease, and she is also normal. So she could be heterozygous as well. And in the heterozygous condition, only the dominant allele expressed. And what is expressing is a normal phenotype. So the allele for normal phenotype should be dominant. For exactly how do we write the answer in the public exam? I will put this in the description of this video for your reference. Bear in mind, this special method is only for autosomal inheritance. That is, the gene must not be located on the sex chromosome. But how do we know whether this gene is located on the sex chromosome or not? Usually, it is given in the question. So please read the questions carefully. And for pedigree questions concerning sex linkage, please watch my next video. Okay, to conclude, by studying the pedigree, we can try to identify the genotypes of individuals, we can also use the pedigree to predict the genotype or the phenotype of the offspring. And lastly, the public exam question will ask you to use the pedigree to determine whether the allele or trace is being dominant or recessive. See you. Goodbye class.